arms once strong now shaken We trust forever in your name The name of Jesus We trust the name of Jesus You are the only King forever Almighty God will lift you higher You are the only King forever
I give unto you. It's a love that the world cannot give. It's a love that the world cannot understand. Love to Welcome to worship on June the 14th, still 2020, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I hope you are doing well, I hope your family is doing well. Uh, as we slowly, uh, and, and it isn't quite going in steps, it's kind of like going from dark to gray to, to, to light and we're somewhere in the gray as far as this process of coming out of uh, the shutdown, the lockdown, uh, the being quarantined. Um, Many stores are open, most. Many to most restaurants are open. Uh, the, the few that are not, I wonder if they're gonna be able to come back at all, uh, praying for them. Uh, schools are getting closer to making a decision. And uh, as of this, the morning that I am recording this, actually, and it is June the 8th, um, we are still scheduled to come back here live um, on June the 28th, the last Sunday of this month, the last Sunday when we'll be preaching on the topics of Vacation Bible School, and that, and, and that doesn't dumb down the topic. Our children are dealing this week with peace, and we are going to deal very, very beautifully, wonderfully from God's holy word, and uh, pretty just bluntly about peace. Our, our world, our town, our state, our nation is not seeing an awful lot of that right now. Uh, very, very scary, very, very disgusting, very, very, very sinful things have, have been done. We'll talk about that for, for just a minute. But the peace of Jesus Christ obviously is, is not reigning. It is in the world. It is why the Father sent his Son into the world. And there are still too many who do not accept that peace from God and Jesus Christ. So a little bit on that today. Um, we're without Wes today. Wes and his family, well-earned vacation. I know for everyone in this extended family vacation, Wes and I believe they're down in the Gulf of Mexico somewhere, uh, probably right now being attacked by a little bit of rain because of the tropical storm, but uh, well-deserved by Wes here. We, we have gone through, as everyone has, uh, we have gone through quite a three-month, and we're in our fourth month here. You realize that we began in March, and now we're in June, and it's... Uh, I think we're ready to get out of this. The survey that we put out, I thank those of you who have responded to it. If, if any of you have not, please, please, please do, though the percentages are, are, are becoming pretty rock solid. Uh, the two categories that indicate on that, do you want to come back to church with the safety precautions that we have to enact? And that's like around 85% of you are, are saying, Let, let's, let's go, let's come back. Uh, we're ready for you to come back. God is ready for you to come back into his house. Uh, may we open this morning with the Lord's Prayer again. Would, would you join with me in, in your heart or with your family, whoever is around you right now? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and to forgive us our trespasses as we are to forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. Good morning. Happy Sunday to you. <clears throat> Hope you've had a great weekend. Are you afraid of anything? We all are. And I know that sometimes y'all are afraid of little things like spiders. 
How about uh, some people are afraid of water, bugs, heights, uh, dogs, cats. There's all kind of things that we're all fear fearful of. Do you have things that help you go to sleep at night? Do you have your favorite teddy bear or your favorite dog or stuffed animal? Some of you might even still have your favorite blanket to hang on to. It makes you feel good, makes you feel safe. <clears throat> well, you know, God gives us what we call peace. And peace is something that you have to kind of learn how to acquire for yourself. But it, I believe the young kids probably have a little bit more peace than adults do, but adults get scared too. And so today, I want you to remember that God gives us a peace that covers us all over. And whenever you're afraid of those things that make you scared or keep you from sleeping at night, go ahead, sleep with your favorite toy, keep your blanket close to you, but just don't forget that God is with you and he'll cover you with his peace and his comfort and to let you never be afraid again. So when things are facing you that you're afraid of, just look to God and ask for him to just cover you with his peace. Hope you have a great day today and hope you have a great week. Bye. Thank you so much, Miss Lisa. I do not say this out of hand or, or, or to gain favor. Uh, all of us have had to pick up our game, I, I guess is, is a phrase, reinvent how and what we do uh, with lots of help from lots of people. Uh, again, Austin, if you haven't watched his, his conversation with Wes on Facebook and maybe it's on YouTube by now, please do what this, this gentleman, this man behind the scenes of this church that has enabled us to, to remain in touch with you, to continue to offer you worship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So do watch that. But no one in this church has stepped up her game more. And Lisa Smith was already operating at a rather high level uh, than Lisa has. I, I, I am so proud of and I'm so blessed by and, and I thank God so much for Lisa's heart. She loves you. She loves your children. She loves this church and, and she has stepped up into this harsh time in, in, in a very wonderful way. So thank you, Lisa. Praise band uh, was part of the music that opened up this service. And these folks, the, these gentlemen and ladies, uh, they have stepped up from day one and they continue to do awesome, awesome work again on Sundays, the Sundays that they come. Sometimes it's every week, sometimes it's every other week. Uh, they're here like for half a day. Uh, so they're doing. So the next time you see any of these praise team members, thank them because they're doing for you, for God. Uh, they're, they're doing a lot and awful lot of hard work. And then uh, Joe Janet and Bill Casey on the Irish whistle. Uh, that, that was very special. So thank you very much. Targeting June the 28th, we are so close to that date, there's no way we could be prepared to do it earlier. And I hope and I pray nothing comes along, nothing, nothing happens that would cause it to be pushed back later. I, I, would, I would think not. I, I've been wrong a million times in my life, but I hope I'm not wrong on this one. Uh, I think not. Uh, some few Methodist churches, mostly smaller Methodist churches, uh, have already begun to open a scattering here and there. Uh, actually, quite a number of churches in Florida, Methodist churches, uh, have, have reopened. And I, I find that a bit odd. Um, many, many churches, and I'm in communication with peers of mine across the conference, most, most, most are, are aiming towards June the 28th with the fear and the trembling of all the conditions that are being prescribed for us, that are being rolled down to us from authorities, both on the state level and for us as far as uh, North Georgia Conference level. We're not an independent church. We're part of a, of a large organization. We're a top-down church. So, so pray for us in that. I, and I pray for you in that. And you'll be getting a lot more information as time comes closer about that. My prayer all along has been, and Wes's also, and Lisa Smith's also, and everyone on your wonderful church staff who have been together here every, every week that this has happened. We have had to close down our, our, our worship and in, in, in our study and our gatherings. Uh, this church has been the farthest thing from being closed down. All of our staff who have braved to still come together. And a couple of our staff persons are be, be categorized as at-risk people to a person 
we pray, and I can't explain to you the depth of this feeling, of this emotion, of this spirit, as we come back in a spirit of peace. We come back in a spirit of camaraderie. And that if nothing else, when we come back to this time, we leave some of that nasty, ugly. And some of it's going on in the world right now. We leave that behind. God expects better of his people. Quite honestly and sincerely. God expects better of his people. And I know the vast, vast majority of you just want to come here and say, hey, and we'll not allow touching in our phase one. And I'll be getting out a a three-step plan of how we come back. No touching in here. You can do what you want to out out there in your lives. But in here, no touching, no hugging, handshaking. I don't know, with a suit on, will will an elbow bump be okay? I don't know. But we pray we come back in a spirit of peace. Our VBS is studying, and it was this past week that the lessons on peace came out. And what a powerful lesson it is for us. The scripture is, is it, actually the scripture that I, I think I've read every year of my ministry on Christmas Eve, and, and, and that is Luke 2. That, that's the Christmas story. That's the Christmas text. That's the birth of Jesus Christ coming upon this earth. And I'm not going to read the entire Luke, Luke 20. Uh, instead, I'm going to read... Uh, Luke 2, I'm sorry, Luke 2, uh, instead of reading 1 through 20, I'm, I'm going to read 10 through 14, because that, that's the crux of, this is why God, is the crux of the matter, the, this is why God sent his son into the world, it, and it's clearly defined, and it's clearly stated. A couple other supporting texts as well, one from Psalm 29, a little later, one from Colossians 3. The world that Jesus was born into, uh, very, very different, very, very similar. All right, people are people. Uh, across the generations, across the ages, across the epochs. Epochs are generally seen as being periods of 1,000 or, or 10,000 years. We, we're not real different. <laughs> some people ask, well, are things a lot better than they used to be? Well, in some ways, yes. Medical care, um, diet is, is probably a lot better than it's ever been, perhaps, in, in the history of the world, in some ways worse. They didn't used to have ice cream and candy like we do. Are, 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 are the sin conditions, and, and, and there's a multitudinous ways to, to identify and categorize sin. Is it worse than it's ever been? You know what? I don't think so. It is more well advertised. It, 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 it is almost immediately known if something happens in a small village in India. Well, we're going to know it on the news, on Facebook, on social media within the hour. Um, humanity is still in a state of sin. And that's where all the meanness and, and, and the hatefulness and the ugliness and the destruction, uh, the riots that we're ex- experiencing, what led up to, to that riot, the very first homicide, so, so unfortunate. So unfortunate. It, it, it was horrendous. It was, of course, the sons of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. And since that first senseless, unnecessary homicide, there have been, I didn't even bother to look up how many, and I'm sure someone's tried to add it up, how many painful, horrendous homicides for any number of reasons, all grounded in selfishness, all grounded in anger, distrust of another human being, no peace. God sent his son into the world to usher in a period of peace. Not, not snap finger, poof, it's peace. Not, not like it goes from night to dawn, morning, with the sun up over, over just a period of a few minutes. It's been 2,000 years, and we're still a pretty good stretch from that today. A lot of us hoped when we went into this pandemic that we were going to come out of this a better people. <laughs> I don't know, you think we are today? Uh, I'll I'll let you answer that. It is my role, it's who I am, it is who God has created to be. I believe as a minister of the gospel, I I am challenged to be a deep thinking, not a knee-jerk, slow thought, wide deep, 
Man, I, I have my own thoughts on that. In two weeks, are we going to come out of this better than we went in? As a church body, we can. As a church body, we should. As a church body, the vast, 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 high in the 90 percentile of, of the folks that attend this church say, man, we're going to come back and we're just going to be so happy to be here. Yeah, here's my challenge. Let's do that. And let's do that not just for one Sunday or one hour. Let, let, let's be the people that God and Jesus Christ means for us to be. It was a mean, hard world. Crucifixion was the norm. Mean, hard world. We do bad things. We don't have that bad thing. It was a mean, hard world, and an awful lot of it was just, oh, yeah, oh, well, that's, you know. Those who have all the gold and rubies and, and pearls and those in charge and those who have all the militaries, I mean, they do what they're going to do, and they do what they want to do, and just try to live somewhere where you can stay away from that as best as you can. That, that was that world. Marty and I have asked each other, if, if things become less peaceful, less rational, I mean, where could we run to? The Blue Ridge Mountains, the Ozarks, Alaska. People run to Alaska now just to get away from it all. I don't know. I, I think they could probably find you there. They have huge bears there. They're going to come after you too. So I don't know. Where do you go? Where, where do we hide from the ravages of the lack of peace, the lack of Jesus Christ being in people's hearts and lives. The last several weeks, prior to last week, we talked for three weeks on the Holy Spirit. And, and I pray that was a blessing for you. I, I pray that God was able to get through this, even this man, some, some, some spiritual words of, of encouragement and, and challenge. Ask the Holy Spirit of God and Jesus Christ come into our lives. The world without Jesus Christ and the world without the Holy Spirit being in, inside, operating inside people's lives uh, was, was a pretty scary and ugly place. And so God set upon the process of through a woman by the name of Mary. And as scared and at first, how could he not be reluctant father, stepfather in Joseph? He set into having his son born of a woman here on earth so that not through prophets, not through priests, not through thunder and lightning on mountains. People didn't listen for long if they listened at all. And they argued, and they argued that as soon as they heard it. Obeying God was just meant to be a blessing, to, 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 to give life and life eternal. God's word was nothing but from our creator, a guidebook of how to best live now and how to regain life eternal. That thing that Cain and Abel's parents had lost for us. And we still buck that and argue that and get angry about that. So God sends his son into the world. Just I'll, allow me to. And we know the, the Christmas story. Shepherds in the fields. Journey to Bethlehem. Mary Joseph. I'm going to break in in verse 10. And this is where the first that are told are the least likely. The, the lowest in the strata. Who would that be? Who would you consider that to be today in Monroe and Walton County? In your life, in our world, who, who would be the lowest on the wrong strata? And, and there are too many either for me to even, even throw a name out of, of a group of people. Their, their situation in life. This is who God first brings Jesus to. Luke 2, verse 10. The angel of the Lord said to them, and these are the shepherds out, out in the fields. Do not be afraid. I'm about knee deep in, in, in a series on fear that's going out on, on, on Facebook and also on our church. Just because we're all afraid of something. Just give it a look. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I mean, God is here and God's coming. I bring you good news. Not a whole lot of good news in the world today. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news from the throne of God that will cause great joy for all the people. All the people. Not just some people, not a group of people. Not just the poor, not just the wealthy, not just the well-educated. All people. 
Today in the town of David, Bethlehem, a Savior, a Savior has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord, your Redeemer, your Forgiver, your Life Giver. He will take all this insanity, all this craziness away from you. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God. And said, how many tens, hundreds of thousands of this heavenly host? How, how loud was this? How, how beautiful was this? Both sound and sight. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. Do you know it? Many of you know it. And on earth, peace. To those on whom his favor rests. And like salvation, this one's on us. On whom his favor rests. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, Lord and Savior, if not for the uh, mid-80s outside and the humidity, we could be at Christmas here. Back in that spirit. But, but Lord, we, we're dwelling on your peace. Peace in the midst of in the best and the worst of times. Peace when it seems the largest organizations, the largest powers and principalities down to individual people just, just are, come flying after us just, just, just like a bunch of mosquitoes in the evening. In the, in the midst of that, Lord, the angel came with a message from heaven and said, peace I offer to you. May you receive this peace. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen and amen. So Jesus coming to earth. Not like a big spotlight, not like lights in a Walmart parking lot at night or Target or Kroger or Publix or John's or, any, or anywhere else. Lights affect everyone in the parking lot. This is a light that if we will, receive, if we will accept Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that, that light is ours. Not a light that encompasses the whole community or entire parking lot. It can be our personal light. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. God would have that be everyone. We know not everyone is ready to receive God in Jesus Christ. You know the story. Many of you mostly know the story. I, I was not ready for that. Only the Lord knows until I was 40 years old. And oh, did I beg and receive that light. When, when have you received it? Have you received it? You know if you have, and if you don't know you have, then, then, then you know you haven't. Ask right now, this moment. Say, Lord, Lord, send me that light that I may receive you and, and your light and your life eternal and your forgiveness and, and your peace. It is those that do this. Not inhabit certain buildings. Not, not, not have certain places of residence inside buildings. It isn't for people that have been here for one day or it could be for people only one day. It isn't for folks that have been here for much of their lives or, or even for generations. It, isn't, it is for those who, who, who call and accept Jesus Christ into their hearts and lives. And that's where you see this peace. The, those that know people as, as adults who have come to Christ in their teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, oldest man that I ever brought to Christ was, I believe, in his late 80s. And, and this was some years ago before I was here in Monroe. That, that, that was, and I actually baptized him as well. It, it, was, it was powerfully great. When, when we know people from before who, who have brought this child who God sent to earth because the world was one terrible, horrific place without Jesus. And right now, we can see what's going on now. N not just now, but, 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 but now. The hatred, the prejudice, the pushback, the kicking. Uh, I mean, just... When we're hoping we're going to come out of this a better people, we can. God and Jesus Christ expects us to. Those of us who knew people before they knew Jesus Christ... And, and we know they're different. 
someone who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into their heart, into their life, and, 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 and that process goes at the speed and pace according to God. In, 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 that, in that magic, spiritual chemistry between God and an individual, and we go forward, we, we approach the throne of God as quickly or as slowly. Giant steps, baby steps, maybe even leaping forward from time to time. It, it's up to each one of us. But if we knew someone for, for a year or, 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 for, or for 71 years, and if we knew them before they knew Christ, oh, do we know that there's a difference? There, there is more love in their heart. There is more peace in their heart. There is less sin in their heart. They're eaten up and, and, and tore up by momentary guilt when the Holy Spirit says, oh, come on, Dane, what are you doing? Are you serious? We've been working on this for so long with you, and you're still saying these things and doing these things, or you're not doing this. I mean, and it's true with everyone. It's a process. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, knew it, preached it, taught it. One of the tenets of Methodism. This is a, it isn't a kaboom and we're done. A process but it isn't a process of no movement. It is not a process of no change. Can I tell you something? For all the people that I know in my life, some of my own family, those are the toughest, right? For every person that I've known in any of the churches that the Lord ha has given me the honor, the privilege, the... <laughs> the fear of God in me to be their pastor, the pastor over, over a church. And my number one mission is to teach, preach, to, to invite people to accept Jesus Christ into their lives and in, in, into their hearts. Those that I still pray for. If they're still on this earth or I, I, I know of them being on this earth, I, 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 I pray for those who would appear that there's no change happening. No, no change has happened. I pray for those people that are present here in this church and those that I've known for years and years and years more than I pray for anyone else. I, I, I pray for them. I pray for them more, more than anyone else. God brought our Lord Jesus Christ into this earth, into this world that we may have peace. And you see the peace that's around us today. So let's think about this peace thing for a moment. I, I would pray and, and, and I would offer peace in, in, into your life and into your heart. I pray that for you. I mentioned last week, and it's true for me, it's true in my experiences, it is absolutely true. Not all generous people are happy people, but I have never met a happy person who's, the, who's, who, who's not a generous person. It's, just, it's the glory in this month of June, the, the how many birthdays were in our family? Five or six? That's why we took our whole family up, up to a cabin up in a remote lake, pond, they call them in, in Maine last year, was because we have so many in our, in, in our family. We just went off for a probably once in a lifetime family celebration. We, we have so many birthdays in my family in June, and we celebrate that life. And it brings us so much peace and so much glory. I would pray that peace can be born into your life. Don't, don't, don't fall. And it's always our challenge, right? The world, and we talked about this last week. Don't, don't, don't fall for the temptations of the world. God expects more of us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, the, the, they had every reason that, I'm, I'm going to be throwing that fire. What the heck? I'll just bow down to this thing. What difference is that going to make? And I mentioned... And I, and I hadn't thought of that incident in years and years and years, that one incident when that insanely crazy challenge was brought to me not once but twice. God, praise God that he gave me the power to resist that. Not that it was much of a challenge, it was so freaky. The world challenges us to engage in the hatred, to engage in the anger, to engage in the pushback, to engage in the fighting. Uh, I spoke to someone this past weekend that, that they went into a Armory, a gun store in Athens, and they were nearly sold out. <laughs> that owner told him that during this shutdown, during this quarantine, he said they have almost sold out of firearms of all kinds. Wow, that, that, that's scary to be a man coming from the military 
Sometimes you, you, you wish only people with, milita with military experience would have firearms because a whole lot of people out there have them and they don't know what they're doing with them. And they may shoot themselves and they may shoot you or me. I, that's, that's just scary to me. I'm all for bearing arms. That, that, that's a foundation of, of our nation. But almost selling out of guns during this time, that's, that's just not very, very peaceful. The hateful words we hear that if we don't think like someone else, if we don't jump into this think tank, if, if we're not a part of that group, then they're just out to get you and then they're out get to attack you. I mean, people can't give their personal opinions. Patriots of this nation and land on what they will do and what they won't do. And, and, what they, and we all pray for peace and no one to be injured and wounded and, and, and for no more mean, nasty, ugly people, no more murderers to be among us. And I mean, we all want that and pray for that. But, but, but for the deep level of, of, of angst and anger, it, it's, it's almost like oil that, that, that you can't get off of you. And you just hope someone around you doesn't strike the match. God expects more of us. Those of us who, are, who, who call ourselves Christian, and, and I presume that anyone who ever comes to a Christian church, never mind repeatedly comes, at some level knows they want and they need the salvation of God and Jesus Christ, need God living, Jesus living inside of us for us to be the human being and, and, and to get on that highway to heaven, to enter glory land that God means for us. And this time especially, the, the way to respond is slowly. Sometimes in group meetings, I, I can be the most silent one in, in the room because I'm listening and I'm digesting everything and I'm, I'm formulating wh where they're going with that and where I should be with that. Sometimes I'm quick to speak. Many times not. Be slow to speak. Be slower to speak. If, if you find it easy to jump onto a keyboard or, or, or onto a smart device and just send out incendiary language, If you in any manner, shape, or form cloak yourselves with the salvation and the gift of life in God and Jesus Christ, call yourself a Christian, please don't do that. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible witness. In fact, that is an anti-Christian witness. Don't do that. Don't. I would ask you to be kind to people. Be, be loving just to say, I love everyone, and then act like you hate everyone. We see that? Yeah? Yeah? Don't do that. Don't be that. God expects more of us. God, God changed all heaven and earth forever by doing the most impossible thing ever. God being born as, as a human being, fully God, fully human. The, the, the most m magnificent, unknowable mystery ever for you. So that you will not be one of the maddening crowd. So, so, so you, you will not be one of the, one of the people, so, so difficult for words. One, one of the people st still doing such horrendous things. Do not, do, not be, do not be a member of this church. Do not be a member of any church. Until you fall down on your knees and ask God to come upon you, to save you. To sanctify you, to justify you, big, big words, just to come on you and just, just to make you more like the original creature that God created Adam and Eve for a time, the perfect human beings to be. Peace. Wouldn't you, instead of being part of the roar and the, and the hatefulness and the meanness and, I don't know, the prejudice and, and just the hateful, the, the, the crazy and insanity that, that continues, continues. And the only reason there is not peace on earth is because not enough people have responded to it. Certainly not enough within the church across the 2,000 years of the Christian church. Or we, for all the influence we've been, we'd have been more of an influence. The whole earth would be saved in, in, in the name and the power of Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. If we'd been more effective as a church. There are places to go to get good meals, and I love seeing those of you here on Wednesdays. 
The best part of these Wednesday night drive-through meals, these drive-by pickups, is to see you. That's the reason you have food. You don't need to come here to eat. We, we, we do it to get you to come by to see you and to look in your eye. How are you doing? Miss you so badly. And, and that's why I, I know many of it's between 80 and 110 every week. It just, just, just kind of varies. Even if you're not buying a meal, for, for the next couple of weeks, just, just, just get in line to say, hey, love you, miss you. I, 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 I'd love to see you do that. Jesus coming inside of us will begin to change us and will forever change us at, at whatever the pace we are going to allow God to do that. And we'll come to a state of peace. And I'm not here to knock on people that seem to act in any way except in peace and love and graciousness and kindness. I pray for that person. I pray for those persons. That God would wash over them. God would come to them in their sleep. God would come to them in their waking. God would come to them when they're eating. God would come to them when they're about to step out of their house and do something that's going to be horrific upon somebody else's life. I pray at that moment that God will come upon those people and would just, in a holy manner, shake them to their core and become holy inside. I love the Psalms. I've, I've, I've told you that recently a few times. This is not only a message today, but this is my commentary on. I mean, I mean was COVID-19 bad enough that we had to go into what we're doing now? Seriously. Thank you, world. Thank you so very much. And not loving God and Jesus Christ and just being as nasty and ugly and mean and, and as crazy as you could possibly be. Thank you so much. Goodness. Psalm 29, the Lord gives strength to his people. This is like the light in the parking lot. This isn't a light in the parking lot. God gives, God gives, the Lord gives strength to his people, those of us who call for the light on Jesus Christ in our lives. You understand the big difference? And this is not condemning. This, this is on us. Ask, ask for the light. Genuinely want Christ in our lives, and you get it. You have it. You received it. You will receive it. The Lord gives strength to his people, the Lord blesses his people with peace. With peace. A Roman gentleman by the name of, of Pliny, and he was not the only one, and this goes back to the first century after Christ, was bewildered by these Christians. They'd been tortured and they'd been set apart and they'd been set aside. And Christianity was in and out. You know, when it came to the Roman Empire. In and out, in and out of the Colosseum, being eaten by the lions and, and killed by gladiators. And sometimes they were okay, and sometimes they were, they were in a bad, bad, bad way. They were persecuted. And, and, and Pliny said, these, these Christians, they, they just, you can tell them by their love. And now there's a beautiful song of the church by them, but th th this came from a pagan in bewilderment. Not just hanging out, not just throwing on a label, not just calling themselves something, but truly living the life of love and grace and peace. He said, I, I can't believe those people. And he was being very, very complimentary of them. He said, I, I, I can't believe with the love and the peace and the grace these people live with. It's, it's something I've never seen. An official in the Roman Empire. Peace. I had another text, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and, and this came to me in, in, one of my, in one of my personal studies this morning. This is from Colossians 3. Let the peace of Christ, and, and that's powerful enough right there. Let the peace of Christ, the peace that you know was and is in Jesus Christ. The peace that God means for us personally, let that peace rule your hearts. The, sard the saddest, the hardest, the most devastating place. I mean, I can, with people in the world, I mean, you, know, you can just, if it, if it gets toxic, I mean, I, I, mean, I just go away. I, say, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to go there. I, I don't have to deal with that. The saddest, most horrendous, gut-wrenching thing that 
as a Christian man, before now being in the ministry, is when people are obviously being ruled by something other than God and Jesus Christ and the peace of Christ. It's just devastatingly sad for them. I pray for them harder than anyone else. I do. I do. With all the love and compassion that God can give me, I do. Let the peace of Christ rule your heart. Your, your loudest voice, your go-to knee-jerk gut reaction. Since as members of one body, as members of the church of Jesus Christ, as members of one body, you are called to peace. The clarion call coming out from heaven and from God and Jesus Christ himself is peace. What, what did the apostle Paul insist upon in his churches? He cast people out. We're not brave enough to do that. People that, refu people that brought anger and hatred into, in, into churches, Paul preached and clamored and insisted on peace. Or they weren't going to be there. Let the peace of Christ rule your life, your heart. As a member of the body, you're called to peace. And be thankful. Thankful people, generous people, happy people. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. Don't, don't let people get by with stuff. Hey, wait, wait, wait. We, we're in this community. We're, we're in a Christian community. We're in a Methodist Christian community. We were, we were born in the fires of Pentecost and the fires of... And we don't... No, no, no. My brother, my sister, let me pray for you. Let me walk with you. Let me help you. We don't, we don't speak and act that way. The church needs to bring that. We come back June 28th. We need to bring that back. In love. Work with people. This isn't, oh, that's just the way they are. No, it isn't the way they are. Yeah, that's the way they are without Christ. Let's help them bring Christ into their lives. Teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns. We're going to hear those. We're going to do those. Songs from the Spirit. Song that comes out of you. I wake up in the morning, many mornings, with a beautiful song in my heart. Marty says, what are you singing this morning? I don't know, something God gave me to wake up with. I love it. Singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. For the salvation, for the life, for the peace, that free will. If, 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 if we'll take it, Jesus offers to us. And whatever you do. And there's lots of challenges of what to do and be. In word or deed. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everything you say, everything you write, could you put the Lord Jesus after it? This is Dane Wagner buying through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, don't know about writing. I'm, I'm very careful. Don't make mistakes in writing. You know that. I mean, you can't edit something enough times. There isn't something there. If, if I thought about having to sign my name and Jesus' name side by side, I'd, I think that would change the way I speak. How about you? Next time you go to test or jump on, I don't know, Twitter. I don't ever go there. I have no idea what that is. Don't want to know. Uh, Facebook. Uh, I mean, could you sign your name and Jesus' name on that? Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to Father the God through him. I pray for peace in your life. It comes from one place. Not a little, not a lot. Over our heads in it. Over my head I want to go. I want to go into jumps into God's ocean. I want to jump into God's river of life. I, 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 I want to dive in. I don't want a little finger to live. I don't want a little toe to live. I don't want just a spot on my arm to live. I want to be alive. I turned 71 years old today. I want to live forever. In God and Jesus Christ, I'm not even an infant. I want to live forever. And to do that, I, we, all have, we have to jump into the water and allow God and Jesus Christ to wash his peace over us. We continue to be amazed by so many of you. And at first it shocked us and now it just awes us. 
that so many of you, your love, and, and it is first and directly, it just is. It, it's first and directly a true indication of your love for God and Jesus Christ, uh, for your thanking God, for, for offering you salvation. And for those of us that have accepted it, Lord, take it all. Just, just give me a little tent. Marty would be pretty unhappy that that's all I can give her, but take it all if you need it. <laughs> you have offered me life eternal, Lord. Take it all. I, I thank you for your generosity for the ministry of this church. That looking back, we're going to see it was, it was as powerful and it was, it was as spot on as we ever have been. And now, and now today, my 10 plus, year, 10 plus years being here. Thank you. As we go into this time. Musical interlude of offering to God ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for the many, many words of love and encouragement. And I mean, we're all in this together, even though we're separated. Most of us are separated. Uh, this, this is going to be, you know, we try to tell our grandchildren about this and they're going to go, what? You, you, you don't remember clearly, Grandpa, because you're in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. Oh, there, there, there's not a whole lot I forget. Really? Things are like that? I can't imagine that. This is going to be stories. They're going to write history books about this. They're going to write novels about this. I don't have to buy any of them, any of them because I, I, I've lived it with you. Um, I thank all of you for hanging with us. I thank those of you that hang with us through these worship services. I know because my wife and I sit down on Sunday mornings on a couch and when you're not sitting in a, in, and people come and go even we're, when we're here, but... I, I appreciate those that hang with it. 
or if you have to leave, that you come back. I, I just pray you're blessed. We'll also be back next week. We pray for travel mercies, pray for a good, relaxing time of recovery. Uh, a lot has drained out, all of us. There's been a drain. You and your love and your gifts and your hanging with us has been the only thing besides God and Jesus Christ has built us up. Father God, I thank you for these people. I thank you for your word. Dear God, I thank you. You sent your son on this earth to bring us peace. Peace. That you don't want. We cannot be. As in the parents and grandparents of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you had to cast them out for a time because they'd become like the world. And you couldn't, you weren't going to put up, you couldn't put up with that, you weren't going to put up with that. In some manner, shape, or form, this, this, this has been, this, this has been a warning from you, God. This has been and is a warning from you. May we get over ourselves. Whatever we think is that 10 by 90 foot idol that's in front of us that we have to bow down to, may we just shatter that and tear that down. And Lord, once again, find our peace in you. In the name of our Son, Holy Son, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. See you next week. Wes will be back right here. God bless y'all. God bless your family.